If you were intrigued by Asus's ZenBook Pro Duo, that dual screen, huge laptop that seemed really innovative, but you wanted something a little smaller, Asus finally has an answer for you. This is a ZenBook Duo. It's a 14-inch laptop. It also has that second screen, but now the second screen is slightly smaller. It's around 12 inches rather than 14. Uh, but the big difference is that this entire machine is just a lot more compact. So the ZenBook Pro Duo weighed around 5.5 pounds, which just make it really hard to recommend in this era of like four pound ultra portables. This machine weighs 3.3 pounds, which makes it a lot more competitive with a lot of ultra portables out there. It's only slightly heavier than the MacBook Pro 13 inch, and it just makes it more feasible as something people would actually want to buy. Now, functionally, it works a lot like the ZenBook Pro Duo, where you can use the second screen to house other windows. You can blow up another major window on it. Um, basically, it's all about multitasking and being able to spread out your workflow across different machines. Uh, but the big difference now is that it's just a lot easier to carry around. The ZenBook Duo also includes the latest in Intel 10th generation processors. It has Windows Hello IR cameras for fast face authentication. The screen is also Pantone validated, so it should be calibrated for a decent amount of color accuracy. Could be a machine that's useful for creatives and artists. Having a nice long screen like this right below your main screen could be useful for video and audio editing timelines as well. And for me, I just like having extra YouTube videos. It's nice to browse Twitter while I'm doing something else on the main screen. There's so much you can do with this. It's really gonna be interesting to see how far Asus can push it moving forward. Based on my brief time with the ZenBook Duo here, uh, I've noticed that the keyboard does not feel as good as the Pro Duos did. Maybe it's just a little smaller. Um, also, having a keyboard way up front is just something that takes a bit of getting used to. Asus has done this on a couple of machines, and some other PC makers have too. Uh, for me, it's not as comfortable if you don't have a wrist pad or something uh, together with it. This may come with a wrist pad uh, like the Pro Duo did. And the trackpad is also kind of small too. We're used to big, you know, uh, wide trackpads these days. Uh, this one is pretty small. It's more tall than wide. And you know, if you're gonna do a lot of mousing around, you're probably not gonna use that very much. This is a machine where you'll definitely need another mouse, but I feel like for a lot of people who do creative work anyway, that's not a big change. And for being such a small machine, it's also pretty well equipped port-wise too. You've got two USB-A ports uh, for your older devices. I see a single USB-C here, full-size HDMI, and there's a micro SD card slot. So it's something you could take anywhere and do a lot of work with, and you really don't have to worry about having a dongle or anything like that. It's not as powerful as the ZenBook Pro Duo, that's not too surprising. That machine had the RTX 2060 GPU, which made it pretty decent for gaming, actually. This one has a slightly slower NVIDIA GeForce MX250, so it's not a very powerful chip. Um, maybe you'll play Overwatch around 60 FPS and 1080p, um, but you know, you're not gonna be playing AAA games with this. But I think for a consumer who wants this dual screen power and wants a machine they can carry around easily day to day, this is something I think we're gonna be able to recommend a lot more easily. I haven't had too much time with this machine, uh, so we really need to put it through its paces. I think in terms of the way it looks and feels, it's just a lot more practical than the ZenBook Pro Duo. It's just really hard to recommend a five and a half pound machine to anybody these days. Whereas this one at 3.3 pounds with two screens could be a lot more interesting. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more news from CES 2020.